Well, is inter interplanetary travel possible in a short span of time? You know, it might be already, for all I know, because I'm not going to put out something here that I'm only going to delve into uh, what the realities are of the situation right now. But, uh, you know, when I really start getting into this issue, I could realize that there's probably a lot more to the possibility that there's uh, much better ways of interplanetary travel now that maybe we are not being told. I don't know this for a fact, of obviously... And if I did know this for a fact, I'd probably be killed, right? <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's, it is pure conjecture. But, uh, you know, I'm going to actually give you a little food for thought on this video. First off, there's EM drive, which is also known as RF resonant cavity, cavity thruster. Now, I'm not going to get into all the technical aspects of this because it sounds like a bunch of freaking mum mumbo jumbo to me. And uh, I'm just getting it straight from Wikipedia. So, you get the, uh, you know, the more rationalized version of it versus uh you know the the version that might be uh, uh exaggerated to the max but anyway the device or engine requires an electrical power source to produce its reflective reflecting internal microwave but does not have any moving parts or require any reaction mass as fuel if proven to work as claimed in other words they can use this in a vacuum and actually that's probably where the device is most be it most be most needed in a vacuum in space um so if proven as claimed this technology can be used as to propel vehicles intended for all forms of travel including ground travel marine travel submarine travel air flight travel space travel but the biggest thing would be through space because you need a fuel and this actually works off either a small new ra uh, nuclear reactor or, uh, and, and, they, and they say, you know, it's been controversial for the last 10 years they've been messing around with this, but I'm going to give you a little more food for thought on this thing. You know, you think about some of the UFOs that have been sighted over since, I don't know, the late 40s. I mean, there's been claims that, they, you know, the, the, the Nazis or something had UFOs or had the flying saucer technology. They had the flying, they had the, the, the bell with the time travel. I don't even know. I mean, it's stuff that gets more and more outlandish, but... You know, what I can't refute is, you know, back in the 50s, they didn't have drones. And, uh, you know, there's been some really, really good um, footage of, you know, spacecraft that look like flying saucers from the 50s, especially in South America, where supposedly the Nazis escaped to. Actually, I think, you know, if this, if this actually is something real that actually happened, this was actually, this is what I think of picture of one that happened in Switzerland. Um if this really is something, you know, solid, and I, and, it's some, and you know, today's day and age, I would think if I, if something like this was taken a picture of, I would just think it's some new high tech, you know, you know, uh, spacecraft that the military is using, and I wouldn't think it's from another planet. You know, if it's from another planet, we're in deep shit. That's like I'll tell you that right now, and I'm not going to worry about it. Because, you know, <laughs> it's like, just hope they're friendly. Because they if they got technology to get here like that, man, we could, they could screw us up. But, you know, when I'm looking at it like this, I think there's actually hidden technologies out there. And, you know, they drop dimes. They drop dimes on us. You know, they drop dimes about a lot of damn things. They don't really tell us every damn thing, but they always hint. That's my theory. And, you know, here it is. The theory is... The theory is, it says, any apparently reactionless drive is treated with skepticism by the physics community because a truly reactionless drive would violate the laws of conservation of momentum. But says Sawyer Scheuer says that the drive does not violate the conservation laws of momentum and, does, and is not reactionless. Uh, you know... The Chinese already said they have this, but they're probably full of it, <laughs> you know. But you never know. I mean, if, if actually, you'd probably be the first ones to develop because they're pretty damn smart people. But the thing is, when I'm looking at this technology, uh, what it says, it's capable of actually going 250 uh, million miles per hour in space. That's one of the theories. Uh, in other words, you could travel to the moon, to moon in like three or four hours instead of days. You could travel to Mars in weeks, you know, two or three weeks. Instead of years, uh, because they're going millions of miles an hour, um, probably pretty damn dangerous. Because you know, if you just hit one little thing out there, boom, man, <laughs> you'd have some serious body damage. Your aircraft probably blow up in a million pieces. But uh, you know, it's probably it's probably true in some ways because 
when I'm looking at this technology and I'm like, you know, putting two and two together with other things from, you know, the 40s and 50s that were cited after World War II, um, I don't think that stuff's ex extraterrestrial. Actually, I think that's man-made. Some of the, a lot of stuff is hoaxes, but not everything is hoaxes. Not everything is hoaxes, and you know, it's almost like I think they drop dimes on things and they tell us a little bit about what's going on, but they don't tell us everything that's going on. They just kind of hint at what's going on. It's almost like as to prepare the public for an unveiling, you know. And, and actually, they you know they're even hinting at you know what the financial situation is right now in the world too. Uh, I know the doom and gloomers in the alternative media have been saying this for the last 20 years or something, or 10 years, or 5 years at least, about imminent crash, but, you know, now the major media is talking about it. You know, so, I mean, it's almost as if, um, you know, they're bringing it out piecemeal. And, actually, I think a lot of this technology could probably be uh, applied to daily drivers that we have, too. You know, even if you're probably not familiar with the Joe cell, it was something about a guy, a guy named Joe in Australia developed something, and he doesn't he didn't understand how it works, but it seemed to be taking some other types of energies and running a car for much less money. Uh, but you know, it's almost like we don't understand all the damn forces that are going on. You know, I talked about uh, you know with health technology, you talked about the spooky remote. Uh, a lot of this might be involving things that we don't understand. Nobody understands quantum physics. You know, I don't understand it either. I don't know what's involved with this. You know, it could be grabbing an, an, an unseen force that we don't know. You know, they say most of the universe is actually made up of dark matter and dark energy. We could be tapping into something else with this type of drive that nobody understands. You know, if somebody looked at a cell phone today or a microwave, uh, I mean a cell phone of today and a microwave of today, from back in the medieval times, they'd think it was total magic. It would seem impossible. How could you do that? How could you heat food in three minutes with no fire? How could you talk to somebody on the other side of the world? You know? I mean, I'm not going to freaking say the technology's not there, but you know what? I have a hint. I get a hint is that they're basically telling us things piecemeal. And, you know, it's almost as if... Uh, they want to present a happy picture of it, but then again, there probably is a dark side where they look to control humanity. Uh, you know, I look at it as humanity should be free and open all the way. And, you know, a lot of this technology is being brought to us piecemeal because they on the top actually want to control the technology. And that's really 99% of the problem. You know, it's we as the human race need to freaking take charge of our own damn technology. I suspect highly that this technology is legit. But it's almost like you're walking off into the abyss with it because who knows what the repercussions are. You know, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know what the repercussions are for a lot of technology, even if, say, for instance, we're tapping into other energies that we don't understand. What the hell does that mean? You know, what does that, what does that mean to us? Are we disrupting something that we don't see that could affect us indirectly? You know, back in the day, nobody knew what the hell ozone was. You know, people were saying, you know, let's do this and we'll do that. And a lot of times things were depleting the ozone layer, right? Nobody knew what it was back then. You know, nobody really freaking thought about it. So maybe if we're tapping into dark energies, we could be stepping into something that's unknown that could affect our lives, you know. But, you know, I look at it like this, you know. It's almost as if, you know, the only way you're going to find out is to go for it, you know. How the hell was the new world discovered? They went for it. How the hell did Christopher Columbus get to, you know, get to America or Cuba, wherever he got to? Hey, man, he just went for it. So, you know, that's the way I look at it. You know, how do you, if you're going to find out, you're going to find out by delving both feet in. So, but uh, I, have a, I have a good suspicion that this technology already exists. And, you know, the reason is because a lot of, um, you know, the UFOs we've seen, they're not coming from out of space. They can't be. You know, we got so many freaking people with telescopes looking up in the skies. If they're coming from out of space, they would have seen them. You know, all of a sudden, oh, there's a UFO over the city someplace. You know, to see, especially going back in the 50s. Today, I wouldn't buy into any UFO things now because there's so many drones out there. But, you know, it seems like this type of silent drive 
technology where a craft can hover over the earth has been around and probably developed by mankind for many decades for and it's just hidden from us and you know when they're talking about this em, EM drive uh it's like something they're just dropping hints at us you know actually i think you know even if you go back to some of the legends in india the country of india there was actually battle they talked about battles of uh spacecraft fighting each other and you know a lot of people thought it was fable but you never know it could be reality and you know the world might have been destroyed many times over and you know said said back to the stone age from day you know go straight back to day one and people had to rediscover things you know we look at the pyramids today and we realize you know, people are start, it's starting to dawn on people that those things are probably power generators, you know. A lot of people just thought, you know, you know they know what the hell they're for, man. What the hell is, you know, who the hell would make something that big for, you know, putting a king in there or something as a tomb, right? There's a lot of secret knowledge out there. And actually, there's a lot of secret knowledge that goes all the way back to the ancients. That's why a lot of times I'm harping on a lot of these different things with frequencies. Because I think we can actually change our lives for the better with frequencies. But then again... I don't know, it depends on who's in control of the frequencies that they can use it against the population. So, But, um, you know, looking at this technology, I think it's actually for, it could be used much, more, very much for the betterment of mankind because uh, it could, you know, cause whereby we don't have any cost in energy at all. None. Zero. Zero. So, you know, it has a happy thoughts to it, but, uh, you know, being that it's, I, I personally think this technology exists. I know there's a lot of people on the internet that make, you know, assumptions and exaggerations that, you know, <laughs> that there's people, the elite are already traveling to Mars and traveling to, you know, doing interplanetary travel and things like that. But, you know, it's a, it's a matter of, I, I just think that, um, you know, they do have some technology, but you know, one of the biggest problems is, is keeping a lid on it. And, you know, they realize it's going to get out one way or the other. So what they do is they prepare the public by giving it to them, for, giving it to them piecemeal. So um, don't be surprised if this comes out in the near future, maybe after we have a catastrophic uh, global conflict over oil or something like that. You know, we look back and we say, where'd that conflict come from? It, it came from... Uh, energy sources and, and oil and the fight for oil and then, and then this finally comes out right so uh, but I do think that you know since they've actually have the theories published and they're doing some things in the lab now some of the things are more controversial because they talked about uh, they said that some of the things were not in a pure vacuum and it disproved that it really worked because uh, some of the components of this one experiment could not be um, evacu you know, done in a pure vacuum. And that was an experiment done in July 2014. But uh, they said it, it, it still it could be done. But you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking is that you know, when I associate this again, when I say I associate this again with the UFOs that if we have seen and there are pretty damn solid evidence of some kind of other technology. And, you know, and I say they're not coming from outer space. I think they're coming from, uh, from the planet itself. I don't know where they would be hidden. I mean, some people talk about the hollow earth theory, but I delved into that a little bit. I looked at that a little bit. I say it's possible, but is it probable? I don't really know. I don't know. I mean, whether it is or it isn't, is it's a fact that exists for in reality, but I can't really ascertain if that's true or not. But actually, most of these actually that's something Bill Cooper talked about uh, when he looked at these. You know, if you if the Bill Cooper that was uh, you know killed actually, um, you know, was more of a conspiracy theorist, but he was actually a former naval intelligence officer. Uh, he talked about these things. He actually uh, said he saw those, and it came out through the ocean. Which means, I think they're human. I think there's humans that own this stuff, and it's not alien or anything like that. So, you know, they're actually, when they're talking about this type of technology, and they're saying that there's an EM drive out there, and they're talking about, you know, seeing some of these stories about, 
you know, signing up people to colonize Mars. You hear that stuff on the major media. Actually, I think uh, they're preparing people for the future. They probably have, psychologically, they're preparing people for the future. They probably do have this technology already. It's amazing how they can keep it hidden so much if they do have it, but some of the, I look at the very ironclad facts that you know we've been seeing some some of the there are some very 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 good uh, sightings of UFOs back in the 40s and 50s that could not have been faked. You know today it could be a drone, it could be any damn thing. You know it could be you know with today's digital technology you could you can doctor up any kind of photo, but way back when. If somebody doctored up a photo way back when, or somebody did it with, you know, a kite where they fly to, they did it with strings, they would, with today's technology, to be able to figure out those photos were doctored up, or they did something to fake the scene. But, uh, no, that's not been the case. Not, some of them, yes, but not all of them. Not all of them. And I just have to say that I just don't think these are extraterrestrials that have this technology. I think there's people that actually have this technology. And it's been around a long time. You know, but why they're dropping hints about it more and more about colonizing Mars and, you know, traveling to Venus. And, you know, you're seeing a lot more of this in the major media, actually. Um, it's telling me that they got, you know, and actually um, there's another subject out there. I'll probably delve on it real, touch it on it real briefly. They're actually talking about artificial intelligence that will be exceeding the human mind whereby the entire human race will be governed by artificial intelligence. IBM's talking about that already. Openly. Openly. Which some people are saying that could be dangerous because, you know, who's to say once you let that genie out of the bottle, so to speak, you know, who controls it initially will be the problem, but then the problem after that is, can anybody control it? Hmm. You know, it's almost like the science fiction movies of the War of the Worlds and, you know, between robots and humanity. <laughs> what was coming to a reality, you know? So, that gives you another reason to uh, think a little more Amish. <laughs> i tell you the truth, man. i really starting to think agree that those people probably are pretty much semi-right. Anyway, I'll go Amish to the 40s and 50s, not all the way back to the 1800s, but that's about it. Anyway, except for the cell phone and the internet. So, anyway, a little food for thought. Uh, I think this technology with this EM drive exists already. They're just dropping hints. I think they've had it for a long time. Uh, and, you know, my my proof is not really like ironclad proof, but, you know, some of the UFO sightings from the 40s and 50s, uh, they couldn't have been faked back then. And if they were faked, with the technology we got, we would have already figured out that those photos were faked very easily. They couldn't have touched them up that good or faked it. We, you know, the way we could blow up photos and look at the actual negatives in the photos. and everything. We, we, we could figure anything out today with our technology. Those photos weren't faked. Most of them were fakes, maybe. Most of them were wrong, but some of them weren't. So if the real ones, I think they're from this Earth. I think they're human. I don't think they're from extra extraterrestrial. So they're probably hiding a lot of technology. So anyway, surf's up. Strategic plan. Nine from outer space. Surf's up, baby.